Good afternoon, church family. It's good to see you here today. We're thankful that you've taken time out of your day uh, to join with us here at the noon hour. And I want to congratulate you. You've made it to Friday. Happy Friday. Uh, the end of the week is near. And uh, let's pray and ask God to bless our time as we come around His Word. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your Word. We thank you for the truth of your Word. And Lord, our prayer is that you would help us to truly see how great and mighty you are and, Lord, what the natural response of our heart ought to be. And so, Lord, we pray that you'd speak to us and challenge us today. Help us grow in our walk with Christ, our relationship with your word. And, Lord, deepen, deepen our heart's desire uh, to be with you, Lord. But, Lord, we ask that you would send us revival. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for being here today. Welcome to our weekday family devotions. Uh, thank you for joining us on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. Go ahead and help us uh, spread the word of God by liking, sharing, and subscribing uh, to these different posts and channels. Well, let's look at what the word of God says here this afternoon in Psalm 130. Psalm 130, as we gather here today, we find some very helpful truth uh, that, that in our hearts ought to promote a deeper love for the Lord. Look what the Bible says in Psalm 130. As uh, the psalmist writes, he says, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Uh, have you ever cried in the depths of despair, the depths of sin? And the Bible says, Lord, hear my voice. Let uh, thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If thou, o Lord, shouldst mark, uh, mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Aren't you, if God marked iniquities, who could stand before him? Uh, God in his judgment would consume us in his holiness, uh, in his righteousness, in his justice. Our sin has to be, uh, carries with it a great penalty. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, and uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But if God marked iniquity, who could stand? Not one of us could stand in his presence. No one could abide. God's wrath and his, and his uh, holiness would consume us. And the Bible says in verse number 4, and if you have a pen handy, won't you take it out and mark what the word of God says here. Uh, remember, he's just asked the question, if, o, if thou, o Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee. Aren't you thankful that there's forgiveness with the Lord? It says, that thou mayest be feared. Why does God forgive us? Uh, we think of the result of, or, uh, uh, of our forgiveness as our fear of the Lord. You know, we've been forgiven of so much, haven't we? And because of God's forgiveness, in turn, we love the Lord and, and reverence Him. The Bible says that we love the Lord because He first loved us. And so as we look here in the Word of God, we find that the natural response of the regenerate heart uh, is to revere the Lord, to fear God, to, to, to worship Him uh, in, in reverential love and admiration. And the Bible says in verse number 5, I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in His word do I hope. Uh, I want to encourage you, again, our theme this year at church is that they might set their hope in God, Psalm 78 in verse number 7. But if we're going to hope in God, we must learn to hope in His word. To take God's word at uh, and understand it to be truth. God's word is truth. It's forever, once inspired, forever settled. And we're thankful that we have the word of God. This is God's word, not man's opinion. And it has been, it is preserved of God for our benefit. And it, we do well to take heed thereto. And we do well to place our hope in God's word. The Bible says, my soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. But notice in verse 7 and 8, it says, Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is what God uh, does when he withholds from us what we truly deserve. We consider our sin, for instance. Remember in Romans 6, 23, a verse we quoted moments ago, For the wages of sin is death. Right, so uh, God in His uh, God, uh, the penalty for sin is death, eternal separation from God, in a place the Bible calls hell. But God is merciful in that He withholds from us what we truly deserve because of Jesus Christ. So the flip side of of mercy is God's grace because He gives us what we don't deserve. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians two eight nine, for by grace are ye saved through faith. 
and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we look here and we find that uh, with the Lord there is mercy and with him is plenteous redemption. Now that is, that's God's grace. There's mercy, there's grace. Uh, and, and we're thankful for what God promises, and not just a little bit of redemption, but plenteous redemption. In other words, God's redemption isn't only for you, nor is it only for me. It is for whosoever will. Uh, there is an unlimited atonement uh, that we have because of Jesus Christ who shed his blood. He paid for the sins of the whole world. In John, I'm sorry, in 1 John Chapter number two, the Bible says that he, speaking of Christ, is the propitiation for our sins, but not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. And so there's plenteous redemption. And the Bible says, uh, he that cometh to God, he will in no wise cast out. And the Bible says in verse eight of Psalm 130, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Aren't you thankful for the salvation that you and I have in Jesus Christ? And the Bible says, but there is forgiveness with thee. Aren't you glad that you've been forgiven? That your sins have been blotted out, erased, that your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life? Aren't you thankful for all that God has done? So what is what is the response of your heart to all of this truth today? That thou mayest be feared. Fear the Lord. Live for God. Honor Him in what you say and what you think and what you do. That everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Christian, aren't you thankful for the forgiveness that God has given? Let us fear him today. Let us let us live consciously in his presence. Let us glorify Christ with our lives. For he is worthy. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for the forgiveness we have. We're thankful for the salvation that is uh, only that only comes through Jesus Christ. For, Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by you. And so, Lord, we come to you in this moment. We thank you for your forgiveness of our sin, for the redemption we have, for the hope we have in your word. And, Father, we pray that today you'd help us live our lives fearing the Lord, rever giving reverence to God, uh, worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth, and always being thankful. But, Lord, bless the remaining time that we have here today. Give us a great week in church. Uh, we pray that you bless the Sunday services. And Lord, that you'd bring visitors in, that you'd save the lost, that you'd encourage and equip the saints of God to do the work of God. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for being here this afternoon. As always, it's a great honor and pleasure to have you. Please know we love you. We're praying for you. We look forward to seeing you Sunday. God bless you. Bye-bye.